Hi all, welcome back. In this video, let us try to understand the different file formats which are supported by Apache Spark. This question is asked frequently in the interviews and even I have faced similar questions on the data formats in many of my interviews. What is actually a data file? It is nothing but a file which contains some information but not the code. We can read the information from the file or we can display the information from it. So Spark support both the raw files and the structured file format for efficient reading and processing. There are various file formats which are supported by Spark and these are the most commonly used file formats. The text files, sequence files, JSON, Avro and Parquet format. Many of you would have come across this text file in your day to day life. This is the most simple and human readable file format. In any programming language, it can be read or written and is mostly defined by um, a comma separated or a line separated CSV file or a .txt file like that. Next is the sequence file. So uh, you can use it to store an image in binary format using the sequential file format. They store pairs of key and values in a binary container format and are more powerful than the text file. So sequence files are not human readable. So text files are human readable format. Whereas the sequence files are not human readable. Next comes the JSON files. So JSON data in Apache Spark is presented as a key value pair. But typically the JSON documents are smaller than the XML. Hence they are more widely used in the network communications, especially with the rise of web services based on the rest. So it is actually key value pair. Uh, before proceeding to the Avro, let us try to understand the parquet format. So what is actually a parquet format? It is a columnar format that is supported by many data processing systems. In order to understand this parquet, let us try to understand what a columnar format is. For example, I have a data set. So I have ID, student name and sports, which sports they are involved in. So for student ID 1, the name if the name is A and he plays cricket. For B, he plays football, C plays tennis and so on. So for this table of information, the data in the row by storage format will be like this. So 1 for the first ID, I have A, the student name and cricket. And then again I move to the second row, 2, B, he plays football. Then again I move to the third row. It is 3, C and he plays tennis and so on for the fourth and the fifth row and I keep adding it. But when I go for the column based storage, so how will be my column based storage? So in this case it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The first column information is represented first and then comes A, B, C and D followed by cricket, football, tennis and so on. So this is actually the column based storage system. The columnar storage format is more efficient when you need to query a few columns from the table. If you want to take only specific columns from the table, this is definitely helpful. It will read only the required columns since they are adjacent. Thus, uh, we are minimizing the number of input and output operations. Also, it consumes less space and uh, support type specific encoding system. And now let's jump to the Avro format. So um, Avro 
it is actually a row based storage format which is widely used as a serialization platform avro format stores a schema in the json format making it easy to read and interpret by any program so the data itself is stored in a binary format making it compact and efficient in avro files so avro format is a language neutral data serialization system and it can be processed by many languages like uh, c c++ uh, c sharp java python and even in ruby one important feature of avro format is that uh, robust support for data schemas that changes over time that is avro handle schema changes like missing fields added fields and changed fields also let us try to understand the difference between avro and parquet first is avro is row based storage whereas parquet is columnar based storage format column based storage and the next difference is parquet is better for analytical querying than writing whereas avro is suited for writing operations avro is mature than parquet when it comes to schema evolution also we have seen uh, parquet only support uh, schema append whereas avro supports a much featured uh, schema evolution that is adding or um, modifying the columns uh, also parquet is best suited for querying a subset of columns in a multi column table so you have many columns in a table and you want to uh, query or retrieve a selected column or only specific columns then parquet is definitely a good format to use with whereas avro is ideal in case of etl operations where we need to query all columns hope you got an idea about uh, the different file formats which are supported by apache spark there are also the different uh, various others like uh, orc tsv etc you can just try to get information about that thanks for watching this video have a nice day